بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد الله صل على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا رحم الراحم We continue our study of Hadith 12 And as you remember Hadith 12 had three parts First part was about Tafakkur Second about Salatul Layl And third about Taqwa We were in the middle of section about Salatul Layl And <coughs> We said we don't want to rush, uh, so uh, we left uh, part of it so that inshallah we can again talk about Salatul Layl. And we hope inshallah Allah would help us to be always doing Salatul Layl. An al Ilal means Ilal al Shara'i. Shaykh al Sadduq, Rahmatullah alayhi, fi kitab Ilal al Shara'i. Through his chain of narrators, uh, narrate from Anas. قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله يقول الركعتان في جوف الليل أحب إلي من الدنيا وما فيها. رسول الله said two rak'ah of prayer in the middle of the night. Is more lovable to me than dunya and whatever is in dunya. If you cannot do all the eleven rakah, do nine rakah, do seven rakah, do five rakah at least. Anyway, do at least two rakah. At least one rakah. If two rak'ah of Salatul Layl is done, is better than having the whole dunya. So, you know, if someone tells you, and I am telling myself, I'm not telling to you. If someone tells me that if you keep tonight awake, I will give you one city of the world. I would say... Not only I keep awake tonight, I am happy to keep awake the whole year if you give me one city. If someone says, I give you, I don't know, $10,000, keep just one night awake. You will say, definitely I will do it, even I can do it with less. But unfortunately, we don't know that actually we can receive more from Salatul Layl. But because we cannot see the equivalent, it's not a matter of dollar or a place in dunya, therefore we are easily, unfortunately, uh, depriving ourselves. If you really think about this hadith, that Turak as Salatul Layl is better than whole dunya and whatever is in dunya for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Rasulullah is not someone who is going to be making mistake. So if he is not replacing salatul layl with dunya and whatever in dunya means, he knows the value of salatul layl. If dunya was more valuable, he would not hesitate to change. Another hadith is again in Al Al Shara'i. Through his chain of narrators, he reaches Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari, one of the companions of the Prophet. قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله. You know, Jabir was a companion of the Prophet, but lived at the time of Imam Ali, up to Imam Bagr عليه السلام, as you know the story. So. He says, I heard Rasulullah saying, Mattakhadallahu Ibrahim khalilan 
إلا لإطعام الطعام والصلاة بالليل والناس نيام We all know in Islam and also in uh, biblical uh, history we know that Ibrahim was chosen by Allah as Khalil, as his friend. Christian Jews have, this, have the same idea. Why he was chosen as Khalil? Allah doesn't do anything without reason. What was the reason that Ibrahim was qualified to be chosen as Khalif? I always tell you, told you in Aqaid, Allah never treats equals unequally and never treats unequals equally. So if someone has become Khalil, someone has not become Khalil, there is a reason. Or if at a certain time he was chosen as Khalil, there is a reason. There must be some qualities in Ibrahim that have completed or matured at that one point. Then from that point on, Allah has had him as his Khalil. Different things have been mentioned in hadith that uh, perhaps all of them were requirements. For example, in some hadith we have that Allah says to Ibrahim, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the angel says to Ibrahim that, for example, you were chosen as Khalil because you never asked people for help, but whenever you were asked for help, you never said no. You were hesitant to ask for help, but you were hesitant to say no when people ask for help. This is what we should all try to be. <coughs> to give, we are happy. To receive, we are reluctant. Of course, if you really need and there is very difficult situations and there is there is mu'mineen, we should ask mu'mineen for help and shouldn't, you know, uh, endanger our situation or because it's a fun family but if it is not something important or something that is you know urgent or something that is really difficult it's better we don't ask anyone for help other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so one reason was that he never said no but he always tried not to ask people for help Another reason is what we have in this hadith. Mattakadallahu Ibrahim Khalilan illa li ta'am it ta'am was salati billail wanna sunyamun. Allah never asked, uh, sorry, Allah didn't ask or didn't make Ibrahim Khalil except because he was feeding food. Giving food is very good. And my understanding is this, that there is a special barakah in giving food. Even if you give money, it seems that doesn't have that barakah of giving food. And giving food doesn't need to be to poor people only. Of course, if there are poor people, that's priority. But even mu'minin inviting each other and feeding each other, this is good. In masjid, you feed people, this is good. I'm not saying it is priority uh, compared to other things. You have to measure. Maybe, for example, there is something more that someone wants to get married. We need to give this cost for food or niyaz to that person, for example. Uh, but I'm saying that in itself, feeding, even feeding people who don't need, is very good. May Allah, inshallah, give us this blessing to feed people. Ibrahim very much loved to feed people, very much wanted to eat his meals with some people. Even we read that sometimes he had no guest and he used to go outside and look for someone to invite home and share meal with him. So one reason is second Wasalat Bilail Wanasu Niyamun. He was saying Salatu Lail in the night while people were asleep. So 
inshallah if we follow the same uh, path like Ibrahim we can also inshallah become Khalilullah or at least get close to that level if we cannot completely do the same the next hadith is and before I go to the next hadith also Imam Khomeini has a point here and he says to be Khalil is very very high position and if Salatullah had no merits no benefits other than you receiving this honor of Khalil being Khalil Khulla it was worth it and he says all intelligence are unable to understand what is this position he says we and people like me we don't know what type of honor is this gift of being Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala و دوست گرفتن حق تعالی بنده ای را چه مقامی است وی کان نات اندرستاند وات داز ایت مین دت الله چوز سامون از هیز فرند سام تایم یو چوز الله از یور فرند اوکی اس ابویس انفورچونیتی اف کورس وی ایون هیر هاف شورت کامینگ سام تایم وی دونت چوز الله از اور فرند میبی People say, no, we choose Allah as our friend, obviously. But I say, do you have the same emotional connection to Allah that you have to your close friends? When you are with your close friend, you don't look for something else. When you are with your friend, close friend, you don't want to finish quickly the conversation and go and read newspaper or I don't know, watch TV or check your mobile. But why, when we are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we quickly want to finish and go to do other things? So it means that we have not really chosen him as our close and intimate friends. We have to be honest. At least I have to be honest. Maybe, inshallah, other people have reached this point. I cannot really, truly say that Allah is my best friend. Allah is my intimate friend. But higher than this is, that Allah chooses you as his friend. This is very exceptional, it's very high position. So much of trust must be there, so much of love, so much of value, so much of sincerity must be in someone that Allah chooses him as his friend. Allah doesn't need any friend, Allah doesn't have any partner, Allah doesn't have any children, but he has such pure servants that he calls them as his friends so if Imam Khomeini says if Salatul Layl had only this benefit that you could become a friend of Allah this was enough to motivate us to never miss Salatul Layl may Allah inshallah give us this blessing that always we do Salatul Layl inshallah and he says tamam behisht ha ra agar be khalil dahand be anha nazar nakunan if someone is khalilullah like ibrahim and you give him not dunya you give him all the heavens he would not even look at them he is only looking at the face of Allah. He's only concerned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah doesn't have physical face in the way that we have explained. Vajhullah. And he says, if you also have very dear friend and he comes to visit you, you would not pay attention to anything else. You would not pay attention to delicious food that might be in the fridge. I don't know, a good drink or fruit or, you know, uh, movie whatever no when your close and intimate friend comes you just want to spend time with him and enjoy his company and conversation and he says Allah's example of course is 
much, much more higher than this. Another hadith is narrated by Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Qummi in his tafsir. You know, tafsir, Ali ibn Ibrahim is one of famous tafsir, which is rewa'il, hadith-based. He goes through his channel of and chain of narrations from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Ma min amalin hasanin ya'maluhu al-abd illa wa lahu thawabun fil Qur'an illa salat al there is no good action that a servant of Allah does unless its reward is mentioned in the Quran. Some way or another, there is something as reward, even if the reward can be, for example, that Allah says 10 times more, 700 more, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, gardens in heaven, or for example, for sabr which is not necessarily an action in the quality, but for example, Allah says, he would, re he would reward them without measure. He says something about the reward. But when it comes to Salatul Layl, فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ لَمْ يُبَيِّنْ ثَوَابَهَا لَعَظِيمِ خَطَرَهِ عِنْدَهِ Allah has not explained reward of Salatul Layl because the reward for Salatul Layl has a very high position. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's great. What did Allah say about Salatul Layl in the Quran, the reward of Salatul Layl? Allah says in the famous ayah which we have about Salatul Layl, Tatajafa Junubuhum Anil Mawajah Yadun Rabbahum Khaufan Wapamaan Wamimma Razaqnahum Yunfaqun. Allah refers to the people who leave their bed in the night, they call their Lord while they have fear and they have hope and they do infaq. Then Allah says, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No soul, no one knows what Allah has concealed, has hidden for them. Something that gives them light to their eyes because of what they have been doing as a reward for what they have been doing la ta'lamu nafsu no one knows allah has a kind of surprise gift to give them for those who do salat al layl and infaq imam khomeini says Although heaven is very important and you should not think, underestimate heaven. Don't think heaven is, you know, something like gardens in dunya. No, heaven is the abode of karama, of the generosity of Allah, is where Allah hosts his servants. You can never compare heaven to dunya. Imam Khomeini says, even one hair of a huri in heaven, or for example, not even a hair, even a mm, small piece of dress in heaven is more valuable than whole dunya. So someone who is in heaven, or some object which is in heaven is more valuable than dunya but still when it comes to salatul layl allah doesn't mention as reward for salatul layl gardens or rivers and other blessings that we know exist in salatul layl he says there is something that no one knows so what is the reward for salatul layl which is higher than these six and what is Salatul Layl, which has so much of benefits? Sometimes people may say, if Salatul Layl is so important, why it is not made wajib? It seems that it is very, very important. My understanding is this, Wallahu Alam. 
First of all, it is not mid-wajib because Islamic Sharia is made in the way that everyone can do it. If Salatul Layl was wajib, maybe some people would find it very difficult and could not do it. And then they would lose the whole faith. Because some people, when they cannot do something, then they would do nothing. So, sometimes some things are not made wajib because they didn't want to make it difficult. But for Rasulullah, Salatul Layl was wajib. We know that. Salat, Rasulullah was not exempted from our wajibat. Indeed, he had more to do. One of the things that Rasulullah was uh, compelled to do was Salatul Layl. Of course, he loved it, but it was wajib for him. The second reason why Salatul Layl is not made wajib, in my understanding, is because Salatul Layl has such a power, such a great impact, that if it is done out of obligation and sense of taklif, would not suit, would not match. It will lose its essence. Salatul Layl is like a gift that you give to your beloved. If your beloved feels that you do it because you feel obligated, then it loses value. You know, sometimes, for example, I bring you a gift. Then you bring for me a gift. If I feel that the reason you brought me gift was that you wanted to react because I gave you gift, you felt that you must also give me gift. But if I had not given you gift, you would not have given me gift. This would damage the value, would bring it very low because it means that somehow I have forced you to give me gift. Or, for example, someone every day is bringing me, for example, hot bread, warm, from oven, every day. I say, mashallah, how can I thank him? Every day that he's going, you know, in Iran, for example, you know, people go to bakery and buy fresh bread. Sometimes you have to wait 15 minutes, half an hour, or maybe more, depending on the area or how busy it is so someone is going and buying for himself bread and takes one bread also for me every day say mashallah how can i thank him he knows that i am very busy and i never go and spend half an hour 45 minutes you know in the queue so he brings for me bread but after some time, I realized that actually someone was paying him for this. He had to do this. He was obligated to do this because he was receiving money for this. The whole thing you know, collapsed. The whole love that I have developed for him go down. I felt he was doing out of love. I didn't know he was paid for that. I didn't know that he was, you know, somehow under obligation to do that. You understand the point? So Salatul Layl is not wajib so that Allah knows who is doing this for him as a gift. And inshallah, if in Salatul Layl, and nawafil we do them as gift then inshallah our wajibat also goes higher because then it means that even if they were not wajib i would have done them this is very good imagine 
someone is paying you to work for him and he knows that even if he was not paying you he, you were doing this for him do you understand the point so if i know that you are paid then it's no longer a gift but if i know that even without paying you you were doing this for me then it goes very high so salatul layl by itself is great but also gives another dimension to your wajibat so this is why it is not made wajib it's a test for finding the lovers with wajibat you understand who is muttaqil but with nawafil you understand who is a lover and there's a big difference between muttaqi who is just muttaqi and muttaqi who has reached the level of a lover it's a big difference he says still allah has not made although heaven is great and still allah has not mentioned any of the things in heaven as the gift as the reward for salatul layl it says no one knows what allah has hidden for them and he says unfortunately we are weak in iman and we don't have yaqeen iman ma sust our iman is weak and we are not people of certainty otherwise this is a great warning for us if we were not weak in iman and if we were really certain we had yaqeen about these things that we mentioned about salatul layl it was impossible to sleep the whole night and don't wake up for salat or layl and if someone wakes up for salat or layl and inshallah his ser his inner self is now conscious of salat or layl and he is used to zikr of allah in the night and in the night he does mi'raj and ascend then such person would not be given any reward except beauty of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he would see only beautiful things only jamal of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says unfortunately we don't wake up we are deeply uh, immersed in our heedless sleep and we don't understand anything except eating and drinking and animal pleasure and even when we do about that we do them for animal pleasures to get something in dunya or something similar for example in akhira eating drinking and you know this type of things he says do you think of course i'm not saying that the food of heaven or I mean, pleasure of heaven are for animals but i'm saying those who have animal approach even in heaven also they look at these things you know as something which gives pleasure to our animal soul although food of heaven has different dimensions but they are only interested in eating and drinking then he says don't think salat of Ibrahim alayhi salam was like our salat his connection to Allah was a special was another level when Jibra'il went to Ibrahim when they wanted to through uh, through uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam with Manjani into fire Jibra'il went to him according to a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and said something to in, uh, similar to this that like a haja do you have any haja do you have, need anything offered help 
And Ibrahim said, Amma ilayka fala. I may have haja, but not for you. I don't want haja to be, don't want to mention my haja to you. Imam Khomeini says, Ibrahim was hesitant to ask Jibra'il for help. But unfortunately, if we know that even Shaitan can give us our hajat, we go to Shaitan and ask for help. And this is why if we want something, we do it with haram or asking bad people. Sometimes people, for example, have a restaurant. They say, no, I must serve alcohol. Otherwise, people don't come. They do haram in their business because they think in this way they can meet their hajat. This is like asking shaitan for help. Because whenever we use haram means, it means that we are asking shaitan for help. This is the translation. It is of, this is the equ equation. Using haram means, means asking shaitan for help. And asking Allah for help means using means that are pleasing to Allah. If you use halal means and things which are pleasing to Allah, you are asking Allah for help. But Imam Khomeini says we should not be despaired. We should understand that we are ill. But don't lose your hope. Maybe after some awakeness in the night and getting used to it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala little by little uh, holds our hand and with a hidden grace, lutf khafi, with a hidden grace, inshallah will give you also that khalat khullat, that dress of honor of friendship, inshallah. And you also be careful not to pay all your attention to just tajweed and correcting your recitation and you know observing fiqhi rules these are very important and he's a marja and he knows that of course in that time he was not marja but he was an alim already he knows that and these are necessary but he says don't give all your attention to how to recite Zad and Ayn and Saad. Think about Sir about that, about secrets of Salat. And if you are not able to be mukhlis so that you only worship Allah for the sake of Allah, at least worship Allah for the sake of getting that surprise gift of course he is very much you know humble and he says if you manage to make progress please remember this poor person who is disobedient whose akhlaq is like animals and has not uh, risen the level of being an animal has not become a human being so he is not saying that i am a good person you know of course he's uh, very a special person we know that but this is the way a mu'min looks at himself without any kind of you know mujamala without any kind of taruf as we say in farsi you know without uh, you know, saying to please anyone. They really think of themselves as people who have not made any progress and are in need of help and support and dua of other people. And he says, read this dua a lot with sincerity. He, he says, read this dua. Allahumma arzuqna tajafi an dar al ghurur والإنابة إلى دار الخلود والاستعداد للموت قبل حلول الفوت. You can recite this in your last sajda. It's salat. Allah, give me ability to distance myself from this abode of deception and to return to
to the abode of permanence means to return with my heart and to be prepared for death before opportunities expire and my death comes so the section about Salatul Layl finished inshallah we continue next week we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among people whose comfort and rest and joy and best of attention and concentration is in Salatul Layl we ask Allah to enable us to uh, taste the sweetness of Salatul Layl inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin Allahumma salli ala